Hi, welcome back to Chameleon Metadata's tutorial series. Today is the second natural language processing tutorial, NLP2 ETL for the uh, clear NLP output. So ETL is extract, transform, and load, and we're going to go through taking the output that was created using what we learned in the NLP1 video and uh, put it back together as it were. Now the advantage here is that once it's been taken apart and put back together, it's indexed very well and at the atomic level. So we go to the, the uh, education site, chameleonmetadata.com, go to any of the education links, and all the YouTube videos, of course, are at this link, or you can search Chameleon Metadata on YouTube, and the useful links. Today we're going to be doing a lot of structured query language, SQL, and I'm using Navicat, which is a, uh, a DBA tool. You can use whatever you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be MySQL, but uh, if you go Oracle or SQL Server or something, you're probably going to have to tweak the SQL a little bit, but it should all run in MySQL, um, no problem. The, um, the other uh, link here is I put up all the sample tables. Today we're going to be doing a, a news story that has uh, six records in it. So these are here for you. So you don't even really need to uh, load it. But I encourage you to. It's the best way to learn. I'll, I'll be honest, this is like the fourth take. Um, because we encounter different challenges each time. Uh, also, we're going to see if I can do a little bit better than 45 minutes. What the ultimate number is will let you know how successful I was. So let's go right into it. The um, right-hand icons always take you to the courseware. Today we have five major steps, plus the sixth. We're going to talk about some template resources. As always, you can reach out to me in the uh, lower part of the upper right header there, at et at chameleonmetadata.com. And uh, we're going to go with the PDF version because I think it's a little easier to follow on the screen. And we'll just go down the steps. Uh, again, there's a templates zip file provided. That makes this really easy to do. What we're going to do is unzip it into this folder. If you don't want to use my naming scheme, that's cool too. Uh, we'll go there and... We're going to extract all. And you notice all the other ones, Sigwin, Clear NAP, Maven. So we're going to do a new folder, same place, NLP2. That's what we'll be using. And we now show the extracted files. And in there are three, fold, uh, three folders. A files folder. If you remember, we had a files folder in NLP1. This is exactly the in and the out you would get from it. The only thing different on this output, I added the headers just to make it more readable here. And in fact, that's what this tutorial is all about. Um, so you've got the input and the output from Clear NLP. This is all the files, including a, uh, a link to the instructions for NLP1. If you wanted to rerun this and create your own, but eventually you'll come up with this file here and this is where we are at now and we're going to um, look at these these uh, this directory a couple of things the ones with the B are being used in the tutorial the ones with the T are generally templates and then you'll see when we do the inner outer query what these are used for but they're the same thing. One's just in PDF. In the event you don't have um, you don't have uh, Excel on whatever machine it is. So notice we're in the NLP 2B folder, which is where we need to be, or not to be. All right, I couldn't help that one. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to open this fold this file here, this NLP decode out. We're going to add a line, and then we're going to put a header on top of it and then we're going to save it as, as a new file name. So let's start with that. We're going to open this, add a line. We're going to open the next one. I'm just following the instructions. 
and we're going to copy the headers over to the original and then if you want to keep up with uh, my deal I'm going to just grab the name from there for no typos file save as and there okay so we've saved that so we're now done with that step so that file we just put headers on top of the NLP output so it'll be loaded into the database now again I'm using my SQL uh, one of the things we have to do though is we need to create some tables now this um, this raw DDL uh, the raw output file table and we've also got the sentence break and the sentence rebuild because when you think about it the NLP broke everything down to its own its own um, each word on its own row the sentence rebuild we're going to put them back together but once we've broken them out we've got it indexed in terms of where does it live inside of a specific sentence and where does it live relative to the beginning of the document because the same word may have different contexts based on you know where and how it's used of course so we're gonna create a couple tables I'm gonna jump a little out of order because I'm on the video here but there's DDL in 3C1 4A1 and 4B1 so I'm just going to uh, you know rapid fire see they've got DDL in them so B1 we've got the drop statement everything should run no problem going in here new query paste and that builds the first table on this one now this one here is going to be what we use this sentence break table is what we're going to use and we're going to look for every time the token locator switches back to uh, this yeah, to one on the sentence we're going to know that uh, a new sentence has occurred and then this rebuild rebuild table what's going to happen once we know where the sentences begin and end we want to put it back together and we'll index it with the first token of the sentence so now at this point we have our three tables that we just created okay and we're not going to need that uh, we're not going to need that DDL anymore so like I said I jumped out of line and did these two quickly but now what we're going to do is we're going to onboard the with headers file we made up here in step two so in the raw output file it's empty of course and this is one of the reasons I love Navicat because it just makes it uh, so easy so we're in NLP2 here and remember we made the one with the headers now be careful I, I'm not sure if they'll both work I, I'm, I just don't know but I know the 2B we just created the 2T if you see a T it's meant to be a template so we're gonna go in there tab delimited we've already got the table and I'm auto incrementing because we know this is the locator that starts one two three one two three one two three each time of a new sentence but we want a pure surrogate key so that we can tell like we saw earlier is Clinton the first sentence or the third sentence and is it the subject or the object things like that so we're gonna we're gonna want both where do you live as a, a word or token or punctuation in the sentence and where do you exist relative to the beginning of the document and this document locator I'm gonna supply a variable uh, later on when we do the data vault modeling that'll become important so we're just gonna add these guys in and there's 309 of them and now as I said same thing but in this case here once that sentence stops and starts up again we still can see where we are relative it might be the seventh in that sentence but it's the 27th 
piece of information or at the 27th register, if you will, from the beginning. I'm going back to IMS. Okay, so we've done that. And now the next thing. So we've onboarded what is the raw output from Clear NLP. The next thing we're going to do is there's some SQL here, which is going to give us every place that the sentence starts with one and let us know but it's also see so it's gonna it's gonna identify row one row 21 and row 81 and so on because it knows those are new sentences and it's also going to add two rows that's why the union and what it'll do is it'll add these wrapper rows, and this is a slick trick from the COBOL days, but it's nice to have an initial and a sentinel value uh, because you can do a lot more with just structured query language or SQL and not have to get involved with a uh, programming call language. So that's what this query does. Now when we go over to here and we're talking about the uncommented and load via the insert, I'll show you what I mean there. So for that, we're going to go up to the top, and you notice they're all in there. So I take that out, and that out, and I comment the union. So what we're going to do, you notice on line 14, there is a, um, a commit as well. So we're going to put in that zero row. This will put in the rows in the middle, the real data. Comment that out. And then this last one will put in the all nines value. And that gives us these highlighted wrappers. So now we go to that. And if we go over to the tables, the sentence break now has our 18. We'll talk about this a little later. There's a whole bunch of uses for having this break control. It it for, When you get into some real deep, correlated subqueries having that this is more for the class there's really no reason to have it because it's always one or the wrapper values you supplied and you notice this is the first word so the um, the one starting at one is poll and 21 is Hillary uh, we don't need this query so if we look poll and Hillary so it looks like it worked pretty well and so we're cool there now at that point we've inserted and we've got two out of the three tables done. Now the next thing we need to do is we're going to take both of those tables and we're going to we're going to rebuild the sentences. So let's take a second and look at this. This table tells me where a given sentence begins and I know also that if it's equal to or greater than 1 but less than 21, it's part of sentence 1. And if it's greater than or equal to 21, but less than 81, we're going to assign it to sentence 21. And that's how all this works, and you see how that goes. So if we go back to the, I'm going to close that, we go back to the original, That this is where the, the MySQL icon comes into play. So we need an outer query to say, what are your outer rows, or in case, what are the rows in this table, not counting the 0 and the 9s. Now once I get this 1, keep going until you hit right before 21, because 21 is no good, right? So what we're going to do is pass with an outer query, it'll do a select 1, 21, the next one's 81. Pass it in, rebuild it. When it gets to the point where there's nothing more associated with 1, it'll come out, grab the next value, 21, and do the same. Now if you look at these two values, these are just that in, um, you know, it just changes. And my license is good. I don't know why Office 365 is squawking, but I just got these things, you know, back and forth. So each time there's a control break just to make it easier to see. That's what these, and this one's a PDF version, same thing. 
Alrighty, the last thing. This is a, um, a three-position tuple. And what we're doing here, the first position says, what's the parent sentence token identifier? So in this case, we've got 1 and 21. So the first record is 1 within the document and 1 within the sentence and 1 within the, I'm sorry, 1 as the parent, the first one in the parent group, and it's in document position. This record 19 here, the last one, still 1 as the parent, 1919. Where it gets interesting, though, is we start this new group. 21 is the first one of the 21 group, and it's also position 21. But when we go here, the 15th thing in the 21st group, or the 21 group, is really 35 when we talk about distance from the beginning of the document. So keep in note this, uh, this three-level you know, naming scheme. You can make as many as you want, but that's what we're going to be using in a lot of these courses. Now, as I said, this outer query, this one here, goes and gets these and passes in either a 1 or a 21. On the inner query, that 1 or 21 is passed in here, and I won't go over all the SQL, but we're taking and we're putting together these two tables. So we're saying uh, take these two together, put them together. When you get done with here, concatenate everything and put it in there. So let's go back. Like I say, you can look at this later. It's all there for you, and, it's in, and we're going to actually run it right now. And then I've got the Create Procedures, again, this is for MySQL, and the Execute Procedure. And you notice when the uh, cursor's at the end, that's when we're going to insert into that sentence Rebuild. So until that point, we're just taking each word and tacking it on to the end and looping around and around and around. When we're finally done, we take what we've got and we shoot the whole record out. So let's go back to here. We've got all that. So we were going to do, oh, the last thing there. We're in the fives now. All this one is is just the SQL statement in case you want to, um, in case you want to play with it. This is the create. This is the same for the inner and the create. So let's go here, edit, select all, and copy that. And we're going to do a new query. And we're going to run that one. So that ran. Then we're going to get the inner proc and create that. We're going to run that. Now once that's done, the next thing is to actually run the query. So what that'll do is this will pass in a break control. This will concatenate, 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 and then write into the outer table. So we've got the exec SQL right there. Now the way the proc is written, if you look, I'm passing it a document locator. Just roll with it for now. We'll get into what that's used for now. And I gave it a super high number so it shouldn't interfere with things. And then the other thing is I hate when a proc just ends with a return code zero. So we're going to do a little message that says the proc is done for document 990002. Right? So let's take that and copy him. New query. And paste and run. Okay, so there's my little message that the executions complete for that proc. And that means that in here now we should have our rows. And we do. Now one of the other things, look, you see 1, 21, 81, 141. 21, 81, see? So it's rebuilt all the sentences we don't need that, we don't need that, and we don't need that. So we've got our three tables here. The original raw one, we use that. At this point, we've got our splits. And now here, 
We've got the, uh, the sentences rebuilt, and one of the things I like about Navicat is we can do that. So let's look. It's uh, poll Hillary in the with. Poll Hillary in, see first word, the with. So it rebuilt them. There's a little kind of fluginess like it puts in with punctuation because of the way I'm doing the concatenation, extra spaces there. But, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I think it's a pretty slick way to put everything back together. So now that we're done with that, and we're done with that and that, and we can go back to the uh, home education page. And like I said, uh, that pretty much fills it. The last thing I did want to do, though, is I wanted to show you one more thing in here. The T's, all right? So this is just, it, it's the same table you're going to use if you use clear NLP 339. Uh, I'm sorry, 32 with Maven 339. If not, like, you know, the named entity wasn't in version 2. Uh, it is now. You know, things change over time. But this should work fine for you there. And I've tried to put things like chameleon in the table so you can do a find. It's no guarantee, but I do try and make it easy. So if you do a find chameleon, that probably means you've got to change something to whatever your shop standard is. This is a set of the headers. This, is, um, this one is in case for the inner proc, if you want to test it standalone, uh, it, it needs a couple variables. This is the one, of course, that it's getting passed in from, um, from the outer proc, these two. So we're good there. And the last thing is, oh, if you want, if you have Postgres, um, I put the Postgres query in there, um, which should work. So the last thing I'll show you is these examples here, and that's with the examples icon. And we've got everything. This is the, the raw story here, the six records. But you notice that as soon as I find it, in record five, we switch sentences there. And in record six, we switch sentences there. So even though there's six input records, NLP knows that there's um, eight, um, eight content records. And, you know, the way I do these sentinel values, I just want to make sure that this one's not 10. That can cause its own logic problems. But as long as it's more than one above. If you look at these, ETL, this is what we extracted. We transformed it first by adding these headers. We transformed again into a second thing by making the sentence break a temporary table, if you will. And then we loaded using this. So if you were using something like Informatica, this is a workflow with, you know, four nodes and, and maybe some housekeeping at the front of the back or Pentaho. So I hope this has been a, uh, a good course for you. I welcome um, any questions or comments you have. Feel free. And when I'm done, um, we're going to get this up with the new time. And do feel free to um, email me if you have any questions or comments and I'm happy to help. All right, this is Eric Thornton, and you've been with uh, NLP2, and that's Extract, Transform, and Load, the um, raw output from Clear NLP from the last tutorial, and we're happy to have you. Do visit our website, uh, chameleonmetadata.com, and we've got a YouTube channel, Chameleon Metadata. Just search for it. Thanks, and see you in NLP3. Bye-bye.